a volunteer who volunteered to be a member of Jared Kushner's task force uh, on the coronavirus is blowing the whistle on alleged efforts to manipulate COVID data in order to help Trump politically. Uh, now, that person is the grandson of former Attorney General Robert F. Kennedy. Uh, and he told the New Yorker that he was the one who blew the whistle back in April um, on Kushner's Corona Task Force because of what he described as a stunning level of incompetence. Shocker. All right, so let's get into the details here. Uh, Max Kennedy Jr. had told the New Yorker's Jane Mayer that he had sent an anonymous whistleblower complaint to Congress back in April detailing what he called dangerous incompetence in the administration's pandemic response, according to this report. So now, that was back in April. It is now nearly October, uh, and we have seen over 200,000 deaths from coronavirus or coronavirus-related deaths, um, and uh, over 7 million people that have been infected that we know of. Incompetence? Absolutely. <laughs> but that's just part of it. All right, but there's more. He said... Uh, I am writing in this complaint, I'm writing to alert my representatives of these challenges and to ask that they do everything possible to help frontline healthcare workers and other Americans in need. So now, understandable, right? That he's saying, look, we've, we've got some dangerous incompetence. We need help. We, we need help. This pandemic response uh, under Kushner is, is terrible. Well, what made it so bad? Uh, well, we'll get to that. But first, what was Kennedy doing there? Uh, well, he was advised by a friend to volunteer for Kushner's impact team, uh, and decided to jump at the opportunity to join the supply chain task force in March, believing that the job was not political. So, look, Kennedy is somebody who now is, you know, working for the Democrats, uh, and I think it's important to point that out. But originally, he was like, Kushner task force, yeah, yeah, look, I just want to help this pandemic, because already things are getting fairly bad uh, here in America, and this still where we had uh, fairly low deaths uh, in this country, but nonetheless wanted to help to make sure people in this country, uh, medical professionals specifically, had enough PPE to handle this. And so he did that. Now, Kennedy was surprised when he got there to find out that he was surrounded by about 20 other, uh, by other 20-something volunteers from various fields with no experience in procuring medical supplies. So, well, that's fine, right? I, I mean, that can't be the whole team. Or is it? Well, he told Meyer that instead of being the support staff for the procurement team, as he originally believed, they were, he was told that they actually were the team. Quote, we were the entire frontline team for the federal government. Wow. Already, wow. Uh, now, Look, I appreciate that they were volunteering to help, but they had no idea what to do. None, because they've never done procurement before. Uh, now, the team was tasked with procuring these much-needed medical supplies, N95 masks, uh, you know, gloves, uh, uh, face shields, you know, other uh, PPE that they use in medical settings. Uh, they were tasked to do that with their own laptops, so they brought their own personal computers in, and their own private email accounts, which were not government. Oh, great. Uh, I'm sure that went very well. Or at least maybe it would have went well had the government and uh, the Trump administration itself not actively tried to sabotage it. Kennedy said that as the weeks went on, he was disturbed by President Trump's efforts to downplay the pandemic, which we know from the Bob Woodward tapes uh, that Trump knew that this virus was dangerous. It knew that he knew that this was a problem. He knew that it was affecting not just older people, but young people as well. Uh, called this incredibly devastating, um, but also said, I downplayed it because I didn't want to create a panic. While also creating panics about Democrats, uh, about, you know, quote unquote, riots, uh, and all that other stuff, but uh, no pan, uh, no, you know, no panic on the uh, pandemic at all, right? Uh, now, Kennedy, for his part, says, "I knew from that room that he was saying things that just weren't true." Shocker, and added that the team was just 
too small to meet the challenge. Too small, too unprepared, uh, not enough support. Any, is, is, is there any surprise that they failed at their job? As a result, they failed to get enough equipment, forcing hospital workers to reuse potentially contaminated equipment, which of course got a lot of medical professionals sick, uh, or improvised with garbage bags, and we've seen all those pictures, while states bid against each other for those critical supplies. Uh, supplies that Kushner, according to a recent Vanity Fair article, wanted the states to fight over. Kushner also blamed New York Governor Andrew Cuomo for not, quote, pounding the phones hard enough to get supplies. And said that, hey, uh, it's not the government's job to do this, to get supplies for you different states. No, no, that's, that's your job uh, and the job of the free market. That's what he told a group of business leaders who had overheard this meeting. I mean, that's insane. Uh, but here's what he also said during that meeting uh, that, of course, shocked the hell out of the business community, which were rallying to try to help. To they, uh, There were business leaders that wanted Kushner to invoke the Defense Production Act in order to create, you know, to, to manufacture this PPE for them to use. Well, that didn't happen because Kushner wasn't in, uh, it, it, he wasn't really interested in doing that. In fact, he said of New York, quote, his people are going to suffer, and that's their problem. It's if New York wasn't part of America. But understand that this is at a time where this pandemic was hitting New York especially hard. Uh, it, it was hitting these larger blue states and cities really, really hard. And so the Trump administration basically said, oh, that's fine. We don't really care. Uh, it's blue state. They're not going to vote for us in November anyway, so why should we help them? Why should we help them get supplies? No, that's 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 their job. Go pound the phones. It gets worse. It gets worse. Kennedy also told Mayor that Brad Smith, one of the leaders of the task force, had pressured Kennedy to fudge the numbers um, by specifically creating a model that changes the projected number of fatalities from the virus. Smith told him that he wanted the model to revise down the number of projected deaths, arguing that the experts' models were, in his opinion, too severe. Ah, oh, it's too much. Those numbers look terrible. No, no, no. Revise them down. Create your own model and pass it off. Really? Uh, now, Kennedy said that he rejected doing that uh, and said, I don't know the first thing about disease modeling. <laughs> Amazing, right? So, so now you're going to ask this group of people that already are in over their head and don't know what they're doing to then fudge the numbers for the administration on the administration's behalf in order to make it not seem like it was so bad. Complete corruption. Um, and look, again, things are really bad. 7 million affected, 200,000 people dead and rising. And again, we're heading into winter. Winter is coming uh, in a literal and figurative sense. It's not going to be a good situation. By December, some estimates have the death toll at about 3,000 people a day. That is a 9-11 every 24 hours. One more thing to note, too, that... As I mentioned before, this, this was not supposed to be political in nature, this task force, right? Um, now, obviously, fudging the numbers was, but that wasn't the only situation here. Kennedy also told the outlet the team was directed to prioritize requests from Donald Trump's personal friends and supporters, including giving special attention to Fox News host Janine Pirro, who demanded masks for a hospital that she favored. Well, hey, uh, you know, at least she's demanding masks. Um, while, of course, publicly on her show, saying that masks are bad. Um, uh, and he recalled one task force official telling him uh, that Donald Trump was, quote, a marketing genius because he personally came up with the strategy of blaming the states for the failure to procure equipment. When, of course, as I mentioned, it was really them. It was the fault of Kushner's task force. And they just shifted the blame. 
shifted the blame. Not only unprepared was the task force, but they were deeply incompetent and 100% political. One senior official described the team to uh, the New York Times as a, quote, frat party that descended from a UFO and invaded the federal government. Well, that is a very interesting way to put it. Uh, but, I mean, what else would you say? They're absolutely corrupt and don't care about American citizens. They don't care about lives. And with a team like that, what would you expect? But then again, it was never about lives or about serving the public. It was about helping themselves. GQ's Darby wrote in May of Kushner, uh, like Trump when it comes to fighting coronavirus, Kushner appears more concerned with the stock market than with public health. Yep. Uh, one Republican briefed on the administration's coronavirus response told Vanity Fair that as early as mid-January, advisors were sounding alarms about the coronavirus, but Jared kept saying that the stock market would go down and Trump, as a result, would not get reelected. And so, of course, of course, they downplayed it because all they cared about is their own money. That was their only priority. And interestingly enough, to, to kind of hammer that home that point home, the only time that Congress, that Republicans in Congress acted on coronavirus is when the stock market crashed. That was it. Oh my God, their hair was on fire. We got to do something. We got to do, uh, I know, uh, the, the Democrats at the CARES Act, which is a uh, huge giveaways to corporations. Perfect. Let's send it. And then, of course, you had Mnuchin, uh, you had the Fed, sorry, that was bailing out the banks. And now, now that the stock market is essentially stabilized, things are doing fairly well on Wall Street. Republicans don't really care to do a coronavirus relief bill. Look, uh, the last one, the CARES Act, ran out in at the end of July. It is nearly the end of September. And we still do not have a coronavirus relief bill. No, look, again, if you're a political hack, oh, you'll know, blame the Democrats, right? Democrats had a bill since May. They had the uh, HEROES Act. And they even tried to compromise with Republicans by cutting a lot of money out of that bill. Again, this is supposed to be a stimulus bill, right? It's supposed to stimulate the economy, help the states, help the post office, which, again, had their own plan to give everybody, uh, every American family, five masks, uh, as well as, of course, handle voting, uh, uh, mail-in ballots specifically as a result of coronavirus. Donald Trump doesn't like mail-in ballots. He thinks they're fraudulent with no proof at all. So he shut that down, appointed Louis DeJoy to also uh, dismantle the post office so that they can't do mail-in ballots. Uh, they did all this stuff to try to stop government from being effective in their response. And that is why we are literally the worst country when it comes to coronavirus. We have 4% of the country uh, of the, the nation's population, 25% of the world's coronavirus cases, and the highest death toll of the country, or, uh, of the world. So yes, we are doing terribly. But again, all they care about is, is, is their own money. It's greed. It's greed. Their own priority keep the stocks up, keep making money because they're all invested in the markets. And of course, the secondary effect, win the election. And if they got to fudge the numbers or get people to do it, well, that's what they're going to do. Pence's aide was also, I believe, asked to fudge numbers and to say things that were not true. Kennedy also told Mayer that he had come forward, uh, even though he signed an NDA, but he doubts that the administration can silence him in court. And he said, uh, for the reason uh, that he came forward, if you see something that might be illegal and cost thousands of civilian lives to be lost, a person has to speak out. And added, I couldn't sleep. I was so distressed and disturbed by what I'd seen. Now, he also described the pandemic's uh, response as, quote, like a family office meets organized crime melded with Lord of the Flies. It was a government of chaos. And that is especially not what you need during a pandemic. 
All I can say is, look, if Donald Trump wins, it's not going to get better because it turns out if you elect chaos agents, don't be surprised if you have utter chaos.